You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our new website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 25th, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from just outside the GOP lifeboat shipyard, where there's an awful lot of activity going on, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. everybody we've got a new website we've got a whole bunch of new stuff going on and we want to thank publicly the old gop on twitter um publicly and repeatedly and right my goodness my goodness she's done a lot of work for us this week uh there is a link uh to her twitter etc at the bottom of our new website uh it is proleftpod.com which at the moment redirects to our old blogspot website but we have uh had whispers that uh there's a possibility that blogger might be going away at some point in the next 2 to 3 years right. we plan to be here 2 to 3 years from now so we want yes. to be ready <laughs> to move <laughs> to relocate and still have the same website so we have ProLeftPod.com, which will take you in a magic carpet ride to wherever we end up. And right. when you go to our new site, you will see a whole bunch of things. We now so have many. a Zazzle merch page. This is something that Middle Child has been on us about for yeah. eons. You need merch. You need sweatshirts. You need mugs. You need... Where's your swag? Where's your, Where's your swag? swag? Where's the swag? Yeah. So now we, we now have swag, and uh, Theology OP has set up this store for us, uh, and she told me today, I've talked to her on the phone a couple times, and... Our nerd angel, by the she's way. She's our nerd angel. Our we, nerd we angel. We have, you know, they there are trust fund angels, and there are investor angels. This is our angel nerd. She uh, knows exactly what she's doing when it comes to websites, and, you know, a lot of people have offered help and asked us for things and said, you know, you should be doing a YouTube uh, page which we are going to do now, uh-huh. yep. um, all kinds of things. But uh, the the um, I, it must have been the eclipse <laughs> 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 that made all of the stars align for the Olo GOP to come in and say, "Here's what I can do for you. Let me do all these things and show you what it will look like." Without uh, she didn't need all of a lot from us in order to show us what she could do, and she was willing to do all that on spec. And she just did it, and then we looked at it and said, "Oh my gosh, this is what wonderful!" It's you so know, beautiful. Oh my gosh! And so, yeah. you know, and she's a fan and wanted to do this for us. And uh, once we got to talking with her and realized, oh, you know, this is really taking us to the next level. You know, the next, uh, a phrase I, I really I hate, hate that. with we all hate... my soul, but it's true. But um, yeah. So this this is where we're going and uh we're gonna have a youtube page so that people can chromecast our podcast we which i don't even know what that uh-huh. is but apparently all the millennials are doing it it's a thing and it's they're doing thing. it so we should do it yeah too. we should do it too we're gonna have uh, we have a zazzle page and uh theology op wanted us to tell you um she did not put the guitar case the professional left cornfield resistance guitar case in the store but if right. someone wants one we can put that in the store. So, you know, there is a beer koozie and there is um, T-shirts and there are T-shirts, mugs, sweat, you know, all the general merch that you might see. There are two designs. One says Cornfield Resistance. The other one is a takeoff on CGBG. It's (laughs) DGBG, which is hilarious. Um, Anyway, it's all there. It's got our new website on it. Uh, go take a look. We've got links to our Amazon page, of course. We've got links to all of our Twitters. We've got links to um, how you donate. All of it is on there. But go take a look at it. We have we still have the Internet Kitty or Dog of the Week up there at the top of the page. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And uh, it is just a beautiful thing. And we're very excited about uh, making the podcast available to more people. Uh, uh-huh. and uh, allowing us to continue to do this regardless of what higher and wealthier people, <laughs> higher powers <Yeah>. and wealthier <laughs> website providers do, uh, that we will still be there uh, 
for ourselves and for you to right. keep this going. We're not dependent on powers or principalities right. or princes. We're, we, we have people. Seriously. We have people who look after us. And we we're do. Very, and thank very you. Grateful. And thank you for that. Um, Drift Glass, uh, yep. we, we also want to thank our sponsors. We do. Who are imaginary sponsors, uh, particularly yeah. once again busy this week where the good Lord split you emergency farewell party planners. Yes, indeed, because uh, we're offering a special <laughs> uh, Bannon pack. Um, <laughs> the, the Bannon, Bannon, Faux Fannon pack. Um, which is a combination, uh, you've been fired and you've been rehired at Breitbart package all in oh one. God. So uh, for the people who are being uh, let go and rehired by an even scummier organization. Yeah, which is all um, of this, them. Or, <laughs> yeah, which is all of them. And, and let, uh, let me get this out of the way real quick. Here in Illinois, the local chapter, the, the local affiliate franchise of For the Good Lord Split You, has been doing land office business with the Rounder administration. Honestly. Um, uh, Governor Hedge Fund has, again, fired his entire comm staff, or most of them, or asked for their resignations, effectively unemploying all of them. These are the Illinois Policy Institute um, right-wing Koch brothers drones that he hired uh, when he got rid of his last comm staff mm -hmm. a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and apparently they made some... Uh, untoward remarks in the public eye, which reflected badly on the moron who hired them. Uh, so now they have been asked to leave, and we'll, I'm sure we'll go scuttling back to well-paying jobs that are fronted by the Koch brothers, and whose their salaries are probably being paid by something that Rauner himself contributed, you know, two years big ago. Big time, to. big time. This yeah. is all a big yeah. circle jerk, but it's the, oh, 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 I screwed up. So Illinois governor's race is looking an awful lot like the White House these days. Honestly. In that they, they can't fucking get, you know, get anything done. Um, he's an ineffectual, shouty cracker uh, uh, guy who's less offensive personally, but um, wants to roll through this nutty agenda and, and the Illinois legislature won't let him. And so he's, you know, firing staff and hiring staff and firing them again and doing all the things you do when you're a CEO and have no idea how to run the organization that you're now in charge of. When so. I saw that story, and this is true of the Trump administration, too, when I saw the story about Rauner Purge's staff, I uh -huh. thought it was a two-week-old story. I, same here. I thought, oh, well, okay, that's cool. Okay, that somebody, somebody's getting catching up on Twitter and retweeting, yeah. you know, and then I look at it and it's like, wait, these aren't the same people. And no, this has happened again. Yeah. So it is, it, it is uh, money is not protecting him from the incompetence and nastiness of the people that he surrounds himself with. And I think there's a larger lesson here. Um, I, if you don't mind if I just take over the podcast for about 10 uh, minutes. Run with it, baby. Run with it. <laughs> uh, I was reading this Harvard study this morning, which is about uh, essentially and, and about... That, when you cast. begin sentences like that, you're yeah. so sexy. I just want to let you... I was reading this Harvard study. Yeah. Oh, that, God. You know, we know why he married me. Yeah. We do. We do. Uh, and it wasn't because I look like Mrs. Mnuchin, okay? <laughs> or how many diamonds I have on my fingers. No. Ooh, let's go to Fort Knox and watch the eclipse. Can we do that? Flying a government plane over to Fort Knox. Oh, honey. <laughs> of course we can. We own all this shit now. Yeah. And I'll look like a Barbie doll for the next uh, 18 months for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, the uh, Harvard, Harvard study, yes, uh, was essentially about how the right-wing media universe is very organized and monolithic in terms of how they refer to each other all the time yes. in order to reinforce the message. And it is an organized propaganda machine. It is not news. It is not informing people. It is nope. telling them what to think. And it is well-funded. And uh, the New York Times became a part of that universe. And Unwitting or unwilling, perhaps. It's hard to say. May I ask a quick question? Yeah. Is this the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society at Harvard University? I think so. And the MIT Center for Civic Media? If so, it was at the Bill Moyers site. It will have a link for you today. Okay. And it's being linked on Twitter a lot, too. Just yep. look up yep. Harvard Clinton Cash and you'll find yeah. it. <laughs> That'll do it. Because Clinton Cash, the book, is... a integral part of this story. And Clinton yes. Cash was a book of lies about Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation that was written well before the Mercer family and Breitbart decided that Donald Trump was the horse they were going to ride to the White House. Right. Uh, but it turned out to be a very useful tool uh, in smearing Hillary Clinton and uh, making it appear as though, you know, everything that 
And everything bad that was ever said about Hillary Clinton was uh, confirmed and proven and undeniable because right. there was this book. It was this book. And it was, this book came out well before the election. And mm -hmm. it was quoted in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And even though it might have been quoted skeptically in the New York Times, doesn't matter. That the headline was, you know, Clinton Cash shows something. And so that was used, you know, the New York Times said this. It's very much like Bill Dick Cheney, you know. Yeah. We have yep. to credit the New York Times here for saying something about the evidence in this book. And then mm -hmm goes off to uh, Daily Caller, and Breitbart is the huge center of this universe that yep. feeds all of it, and Breitbart there's a, there's has a, money a, from the Mercers. There's a graphics of a media cloud. That, yep. That, that and it's this scary. Works. And it's, it's, it's scary. And it's, it's all interlocking, and, um, and and they feed back to each other. They mm -hmm. It's an organized um, conspiracy. Yeah. Oh, very In which much everyone so. works in everyone else's favor for the common... Uh, goal of destroying this country. Right, right. And it's, it's as if, as I was saying to a colleague earlier, if I didn't have to podcast and if we were on such a tight schedule, we are, after thanks. reading this Harvard study, I would have crawled under the blankets and just cried until I passed out. Because yeah. it's terrifying how big and ugly and organized and powerful this appears to be. And well-funded. And well-funded. And, mm -hmm. and it seems when you read this study... It is easy to fall into a trap of feeling hopeless and feeling as though um, there is nothing we can do to fight back. And so I started to think about this. And as you know, uh, I am a praying person. <laughs> and yes, you are. When, especially when I start to feel hopeless. And especially when I, that, because that to me, ho hopelessness more than sadness is a sign of depression. And yes. Yes. Um, it's, when you start to lose interest in things and when you start to just withdraw that it's crying and screaming and being mad, you're still fighting. But right. if you just sort of withdraw into yourself, that's things are bad at that point. Or, and I start, or you're, or you're Irish. <laughs> well, man. I just started to feel that way this afternoon. Like, okay, there's nothing we can do. I'm going to sit back and listen to music and not do anything. And that uh -huh. to me is like a red flag. I have to now think about bigger issues in my mm -hmm. thinking and, and get back to kind of square one. And so one of the things I said to this colleague was, and this is very Game of Thrones, I said, I wish I had a dragon. <laughs> Because what I really want to do after reading this study is ha throw indiscriminate fireballs at yeah. the New York Times, Breitbart, the Mercer family, the Republican Party, the White House, blah, 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 blah. This is not, you know, a threat of violence to anybody. No. This is a fantasy of just that scene of she's got her dragon and she just wipes out an army yep. with one breath from her dragon. And there's no, uh, you know, well, we're not going to killed this soldier right now <laughs> no we're gonna do it all scorched earth you cannot sort out the ashes afterwards to find out who was who it's well, and, all and, gone and here and here's and just to take that one step further and again we're not advocating violence in any no. way no. uh but if you're on the if you're on the other side of this line mm -hmm. i don't care what uniform you're wearing Yes, right, um, the, right. The study you're referring to, and, and it, the Bill Moyer side does talk about it, points out uh, that even scrupulous sources like the New York Times and Washington Post might have attempted to cover the issues more fairly, but they felt compelled to give outsized focus to yep. bullshit scandals, yep. Clinton scandals, and, and very importantly, and this is going to sound real familiar to longtime listeners, also give, quote, unquote, both sides of an issue, even when one side felt no compunction whatsoever about lying. Right, right, right. Yep. The both sides bullshit structure. And uh, um, Rick Perlstein has said this and was scolded for it on National mm -hmm. Public Radio. Yeah. Um, yeah. Both siderism structurally advantages side that has that just fucking lies all yeah. the time. Yeah. Because, you know, it's if you have I've, I've used this analogy before. If you have two kids, one's a decent student, one's a sociopath and one wants to go to college and the other one only cares about hurting the first one. Mm -hmm. And 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 the sociopath discovers that no matter what he does, you're going to punish them both. He's in fucking heaven. Are you kidding yeah. me? Every time I stick up a liquor store, every time I, I kill a small animal, every time I start a fire, you're going to ground my brother yeah, as well right. as me. Make right. him cry. This is great. Yeah. And this is this is the license to lie and cheat and destroy this country that the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the rest of the media has given to the right. 
told them, money. no matter no matter yep. what you do, no matter how atrocious you behave, we're going to punish the Democrats equally. And then we're going to turn and, and shrug and so, isn't it a shame how both sides do this and that both leads us to... Both sides reach for the bottom. It's really a sad, sad, sad state of affairs. Yeah. And that right. leads us to the creation of the lifeboats that the, the, the currently well, are under construction I all over get the... Back, I want to get back to my thinking and yes, how indeed. I got cl- climbed out of this today. Because, I'd love to like hear I that. Because, like I said... I was nearing the point of just saying, okay, honey, you need to just hold me now, and we're not going to podcast today. We're just going to cry. And I climbed out of that, and the way I climbed out of it was that idea of a dragon. And when I thought of that fantasizing about setting (laughs) fire to the world, okay, um, I went and looked up the word dragon because I know the dragon is in the book of Revelation. And so I went to, you know, it's probably um, (laughs) Mercer-funded. (laughs) <laughs> BibleGateway.com is probably oh, no, Mercer-funded. I, I, I would. I use it all the time. I use it all the time. Um, mm-hmm. And but uh, the the uh, Book of Revelation, you know, the dragon fought and his angels and the and uh, prevailed not. Neither was oh. their place found any more in heaven. Uh-huh. And the defeat of the dragon. One of the things that's really important to remember is that the battle on our side. We don't have a dragon. We have a lamb. Yes. And I thought about that, and you know, I have lambs all over my office. I have yes, like I pictures of lambs. I have little stuffed animal lambs. I have because I'm a knitter. I just have sheep and little lamb things all over the place. Um, but the lamb is innocence and the lamb is strength at the same time mm-hmm. and and provides so much food and warmth and you know that 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 symbolism is very powerful um and it just occurred to me that and then I started thinking about rounder which we opened our show with which is mm-hmm. these guys are eating each other up I mean, this yes, is happening are. in, you know, you look at Mitch McConnell versus Trump this week, right. and no one could have predicted eight months ago, you know, election night, mm-hmm. that this is where we'd be, that the White House would be saying, no, we're not going to release a tax bill. We don't have right. a tax proposal. Fuck you, which they Fuck said you. they would, by the yeah. way, just to be clear. Yeah. yeah. They said back in January, we're going to have a tax bill. It's going to be great. We're going to release it in September. Right. They lied. They just yep. fucking lied about it. And so it's not, by the way, it's the not, time. And they're it's lying not tax about the reform. Yes, it's just right. going to be a big ass tax. And by the way, they're talking now. They don't give a shit about adding a couple of trillion dollars to the deficit because it's money for their rich friends. And who right. gives a shit about money anyway? It's not real money. And and money. They, they are going to lose all credibility on the uh, deficit issue. Now, let me ask you something about that. And I'm, yes. I don't want to get off track too much. Nope. But I asked this in a post today. Uh-huh. How many times does a Republican candidate have to say something? How many times do do they say something to the point where the Beltway media cannot deny that they said it? I have in a short other answer words, to that. There, there are two examples of that. One is, of course, Mexico is going to pay for the wall. And right. so you saw White House correspondence dinner reporters saying right. to the White House communications director, right. spokesman, he said a dozen times. He said 300 times Mexico's going to pay for the wall. You she can't just, deny that. And she didn't right, deny it. Right. The only other time I've ever seen that happen in my lifetime was uh, Ma- read my lips, no new yeah. taxes. Yeah. yeah. And that's, he said that so many times on the campaign trail that no one was going to go and whitewash that and say, well, he didn't, he didn't say it or he right. meant it some other way. Right. And those are the two times that I think of it. This uh, is I remind you ahead. of a third time. Because I don't want to I don't want you to lose track. No, I don't want you to lose, right. no, you to lose hope. Um, I know we're on a tight schedule yeah, this, this week. Yeah. Um, here's a third time. Um, Iraq has WMD. Yeah, yeah, yep. And uh, the most um, heinous, prodigious, vicious promoters of Bush administration lies. Uh, the people who prosper the most personally and professionally, who got everything they wanted, who sat on camera and lied and lied and lied and smirked about it and then used uh, America's actual – the tragedy of 9-11 and, and the, the feeling that we have to do something about this. They hijacked that to to smash liberals, right. to call us traitors and liars and monsters and terrorist-loving scumbags because you and I lived through that. We watched right. this happen. Oh, yeah. And every – one of those fuckers is now, almost without exception, a respected Beltway insider. And not only that, but a never Trump Beltway insider for right. the most part. The right. Bush, so the Bush, I have, the ball. Yeah. I have yeah. no confidence that our media will hold anyone accountable for anything. There'll be a couple of scapegoats. Mm-hmm. You know, there'll be mm-hmm. a couple of Paul Wolfowitzes that are never allowed, you know, to darken our door again, except you know, on on Halloween. 
But Bill Crystal right now is an ABC News employee. He's, he's on MSNBC. He's commenting on Middle East policy. And nobody mentions the fact that Bill Crystal has no fucking business being anywhere near a microphone because Bill Crystal has friends, friends who own corporate uh, media corporations. Mm -hmm. David Brooks mm -hmm. has friends who own uh, uh, Chuck Todd, has friends who employ him, who tell him what to say and do. So um, and the idea that they can't get away with it anymore mm -hmm. is a good one. But the question I always have is, with whom? Right. Uh, they're not right. fooling me. Who the fuck are they? They're, they're, not, they're not fooling the half the people in this country who pay no attention to news whatsoever. Right. And just want everybody right. to shut up because they're all arguing all the time. The only people that it matters, that matters, is the base. If the base tectonically shifts under the party, then it matters. Yeah. But and and that that may happen. I mean, this is where I think the battle is right now is over this wall and whether because polling in the past has said that if Mexico isn't paying for the wall, the base is not behind it. Right. And that if you're going to make taxpayers like us pay for the wall, that's a different ball of wax. The whole selling point of the wall was we're going to punish Mexico over right. and over again and we're going to make them pay for it. And whose fault is it going to be? It's going to be Mitch McConnell's. Well, yeah, that'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. whose fault it's going to be. Because uh, as they said on Morning Joe this morning, and I couldn't believe it was Mark Halperin saying it uh, as one of the people. Howard Dean was having a real good time on this panel, just saying, yeah, yeah. right, you know. <laughs> the, in order for the government shutdown to happen uh -huh. over the wall funding, Donald Trump alone is going to have to veto a bipartisan spending bill. Yes, he will. And this, and... Is, the, this is the thing that Mark Halperin is peeing his pants over because mm -hmm. there are going to be Democratic votes to keep the government open. Yes, of course there are. That's... And, you know, mm -hmm. the sane people are going to vote yes on that. And mm -hmm. then it's going Mitch McConnell is going to take this bill that has Democratic votes that he needed. He uh -huh. needed those votes right. to get this over the over to the White House. Mm -hmm. And if Donald Trump vetoes that, it is on him that he right. shut down the government. Now, well, if you know okay. whether the base believes that or not is not the point. Now, I just want to get back for yeah, just a ahead. moment, just sure. a moment to my feelings. My feelings. Sure. Let's talk about my sure. feelings. Um, and the dragon versus the lamb, because there was a beautiful example this week in the New York Times. I'm sorry to say, uh, of what this means: the dragon versus the lamb. Uh, in an interview with one of my fave raves, Leslie Jones, Miss yeah, Leslie Jones yeah. <laughs> of Saturday Night Live, who yeah. rocks, you Lovely. know, and speak. This is all related. It all ties into Game of Thrones. Did you notice it's like some conspiracy? Because she is the number one Game of Thrones tweeter, if you don't know that. She huh? tweet, she live tweets, you know, she watches and pauses and then screams and then tweets Game of Thrones every episode. But she I'm going to let that train go by. Hold on a minute. <laughs> well, okay. We've got windows open. It's beautiful here. Uh -huh. uh, she was, she interviewed in the New York Times, and she said about Milo. Right. Milo went after her on Twitter, and she quit Twitter over right. it. And then, because she's a big celebrity, uh -huh. they asked her to come back. They banned Milo. Milo, turns out, defended, you know, very bad things pedophilia and so forth and was kicked off of Twitter. Um, they asked her in the very last two questions in this interview, very short, Milo was a ringleader of a lot of online hate directed at you. He had a precipitous fall from grace. <laughs> it's amazing they use that biblical language. Uh, this year, what was that like to see? And here's what Leslie Jones said. She said, that was going to happen anyway. Sure. That's what happens when people who don't have a real talent, they don't last. When you take away the light from them, they will continue to be in the darkness and they will fade away. And she she said, do you expect to see nasty comments now every time you open up Twitter? And she said, I'm so past it now. If you didn't know what it is, that then that couldn't, excuse me. If you didn't know what it is, then that could bother you. But I know what it is. Mm -hmm. Just insecure, crazy people that happen to own a computer. Yeah. You can't get me. Mm -hmm. You cannot touch me. And so that's. That is the lamb. That's the that is where that metaphor goes. It's not you're powerless against the dragon. It's no, I'm in heaven. You can't touch me. Right. You're, you're... I am protected. Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to say as far as what I'm telling myself this week, when that feeling of hopelessness and despair, and again, we always try to at this point check in with each other and check in with where our 
mental state is. And I'm trying to be really upfront. And when I'm in despair, guys, you're going to hear it. Mm -hmm. You're going to know that this is where I'm at. Um, What I'm telling myself this week is to focus my fire. And that means I'm going to focus on people with power, not right. people with... I'm never going to punch down. Right. And so the media, yes, I'm going to punch back. Uh-huh. Elected officials, hell yes, I'm going to punch back. Former elected officials on the talk shows, yes, I'm going to punch back. Yes. People who are making money off of this situation or who are paying into this situation yes. with their billions of dollars... Hell yes, I'm going to punch back. Individual Bernie Sanders voters who didn't vote the way I wanted them to? No, I'm not going to waste my time with that. Don't care. Relitigating the primaries of last year? Don't no, care. we don't have time for that, folks. We but you know, you I, know where? You, yeah, just let me say that there's a lot of excellent coverage this week mm-hmm. of how unbelievably uh, sexist the coverage of Hillary Clinton's book yep. has been. Mm-hmm. That. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, what other losing candidate has ever been asked to parade through the streets naked while we spit on her? Right. Shame, shame. Every campaign has mistakes. And only in this one case are we requiring her to flagellate herself until we decide she's had enough. Well, and part of that, it's turning out, is a cover for the New York Times. Yes, and absolutely. the reason that they're saying this is a problem with her and her campaign rather than coverage of it is because they're complicit. Right. So, of course, they're the male white reporters who, who consciously or unconsciously, wittingly or unwittingly, got it so fucking wrong mm-hmm. are going to say this is really about her and her failure. is because they don't want people to look at what they did. And uh, we're not... I think this Harvard study is going to catch fire with a lot of people and Mm -hmm. people are going to know and point to it and say, you know, Clinton cash is going to Clinton cash is going to be like I have tried to make uh, Merrick Garland. You know, anybody brings up Mitch McConnell, I'm going to bring up Merrick Garland over and over again because that he's a thief. And that's everything else grows out of that. Anything you say about Mitch McConnell, he's a thief. Everything. Yeah. Everything that we've said that you, you say about the Harvard study, which I agree with, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, we said about the uh, Ornstein and Mann study in 2012. Yes, exactly, um, exactly. And exactly. it was the it was the most read and least covered story because it told a story uh, it, it, using facts, observable yep. facts from credible mm-hmm. sources that the media absolutely did not want to talk about. So they weren't going to talk about it. So they just didn't talk about it. And these two guys say, look, we, we were on, we've been on every show for years and years and years. The minute we say it's not both sides, we were disinvited from everywhere and yep. cast out. That, to me, tells me that there is a cabal. There yep. is a conspiracy, a corporate conspiracy that that particular narratives are never going to be allowed to be discussed. And, and, and this one is one of those. And speaking of privileged white male reporters who aren't really fucking reporters at all, but are pundits, although are paid vast amounts of money. Uh, Matthew Dowd. Yeah. Uh, weighed in. And Matthew Dowd ha- is one of those lifeboat builders. He's the ABC News chief political analyst who has who has blocked me on Twitter and hates mm-hmm. me. I've gotten way under his skin. Um, but who, who wants people to know that for those Dems who think it's a good idea to rub people's noses, rub people's nose in on those who didn't vote for Hillary. It ain't a winning strategy. <laughs> uh, and he really, and he's wrote an article for, for uh, ABC saying, you know, basically um, I am appointing myself the referee of everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am yeah. declaring now that Republicans are only allowed to criticize Republicans and Democrats <laughs> are only allowed to criticize Democrats and until your own tribe is cleaned up. You're not allowed to criticize anyone else as anything because eventually... And he's going to stand at the 70-yard line and say, this side is equal to this right. side, right? Yeah. And well, both first of, of all, you need to work it out. First of all, who the fuck made <laughs> yeah. you the referee? Exactly. Secondly, your position is every bit as judgmental as everyone mm-hmm. else's. Mm-hmm. And third, I'm sorry, and we discussed this last night. I don't care if you have an opinion about, about NASCAR and I have an mm-hmm. opinion about classical music, then you're right. Maybe we don't have opinions judging each other. But what he is saying is abolitionists should have kept their stinking noses out of what Southern slaveholders were doing because there were two different tribes. Uh, Suffragettes should never have gotten all snooty and and pissy with people who were trying to keep them from the vote because they're two different tribes. And until (laughs) slaveholders themselves clean up their own act by by evolving, he said – you know, I try not to rub people's noses and things while they're evolving. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck yeah. you, Matthew Dowd. Fuck you and everyone who behaves like you. And fuck you, fuck you, the clowns who pay you to say this shit. 
on television because yeah. he is sitting in the David Brooks seat. There's a million of them just like this who don't want anyone to notice that they have a side. They yes, have a dog right. in this fight. And their, their, their dog in this fight is their fucking career. And the minute you start judging, the minute you dare to look across the aisle and say, no, there is a difference between apple juice and battery acid. One you can drink and not die. The other will kill you. The minute yes. you say your job as a fucking journalist is a report that is a fact, Matthew Dowd is out of a fucking job. Yes. And the right begins to fall. The right begins to collapse because without that center to lie about the equivalence of both sides, the absolute a asymmetry of our politics, the fact that one side is fucking crazy and lies all the time would become self-evident. Mm -hmm. Then we'd have to have a vastly different discussion. Like, who was complicit? And who were the Quislings? And who's been going along with this bullshit for 20 years in the media? How does Chuck Todd have a job? How does fuck does Bill Crystal have a job? How the hell does Mark Halpern have a job? Why does Joe Scarborough have a job? And, and that's a long and terrifying list. And those people own the cameras. Yep. And own the yep. newspapers, and they're not going to permit. This is why I say, God bless Connie Schultz. Yes, <laughs> Connie she's Schultz. so wonderful. She's wonderful. So uh, we're now down to just a few more minutes. Right, we are, because you have you have someplace you need to be. I do. Um, a kernel of hope, uh, junior dude in his political science class w this year and his first year of college will be reading Ornstein and Mann. Yes. So <laughs> good for him. Uh, and you don't know the strip class, but middle child this morning in the car on the way to school said, we need a Planned Parenthood yard sign for the Good front for of our house. I just wanted you to know that. Um, uh, do, you, do you want to do a week in review blitz or do you want to get on with some more longer topics? Let, well, I want to talk. Um, no, we've done a lot of the, the week in review stuff. Yeah, 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 um, the, the person that was fired or left this week from the White House, we forgot, neglected to say, the happy was the man. happy folder guy. Yeah. yeah, the guy who was was tasked with putting together printouts of screenshots of outnumbered on Fox yeah. um, with with good chirons for Donald Trump to read. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Uh, let's spend a minute, first of all, thanking the people that had lunch with us this weekend. Yes, very sweet. Uh, we had a couple people from Philadelphia uh, meet with us for lunch, and you are always welcome to email us if you're going to be in Springfield. We would love to have lunch with you. Uh, this with was... Springfield, rub Lincoln's nose, try a horseshoe, and stop by and have lunch with Yeah, us. right, right. Uh, it was a lovely lunch. It was. And, Great time. Um, no names, but the uh, they were a wife and husband, and the wife does very interesting work. First of all, a lot of our listeners have written us with different ideas about the $20 million and what they would do with it. Imagine um, $20 million. A lot of you are doing uh, a lot of really good things with your own lives, and we are so impressed with that and appreciate you sharing that with us. We'll get be getting to some of those later in uh, the year. I um, this particular woman uh, works in a public library system, mm -hmm. and her public library system in Philadelphia is uh, providing computer access to people who have family members uh, who are incarcerated yep. so that they can Skype with the person that is incarcerated. Uh -huh. um, and that is uh, an amazing way to utilize a resource that they already have with their computers Mm -hmm. uh, get people who are underserved by the library system into the libraries and making sure they have a library card and perhaps access to other social services. And uh, it is one person at a time, one starfish at a time, one light at a time, mm -hmm. making the world a better place. And if you start to feel despair, I highly recommend that you find one thing you can do, whether it's okay. help a cancer patient, help a single mom, mm -hmm. take out you know, pick up some garbage on the street. Hey, mentor uh, somebody. Mentor somebody. There's a mentor know. program somewhere near you, and there's a whole bunch of people in their 20s and 30s yep. uh, who could use a little bit of um, help and a little bit mm -hmm. of direction. Not that they're mm -hmm. not smart and capable, but they could use an older hand on their shoulder to maybe teach them a few things that they can't learn other than falling off a bridge. And I guarantee you, Donald Trump and the Mercer family and the mainstream media and uh, anyone else that you think is just big and awful and running the world cannot stop you from making something for a cancer patient, no. baking a casserole for a shut in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing one thing, donating a package of diapers yep. or some brand new underwear to a school or a package of diapers to a homeless center or, you know, a nursing home, taking something, say, taking uh, happy fall cards to a nursing home, something yeah. Anything you can do to make 
to shine a light and make the world a better place. We mm-hmm. recommend doing that. It does kill despair. It does. Uh, okay. Um, we've mentioned Mrs. Mnuchin. She's, I did want to talk about how there are so many proxy wars and how someone had said, uh, you know, um, tax bills, who's ri- writing a tax bill or not, is not going to get voters out. Right. But that... You know, statues will. Monuments, statues Absolutely. will get voters out. You know what else will get them out? Um, what? Uh, those those uh, transgenders who want to screw up yeah. our army. Yeah, or uh, our wedding. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I'm, our I'm wedding picking. Cake. Yeah. This is, I, I made a joke on the Twitter because I, mm-hmm. I had um, flag burning and English only in the pool. Yeah, in the pool. Um, and you but it's always the same one, yeah. you know, basket of shitty, awful, um, yep. um, divisive issues that conservatives stick their hands into and dredge up the, the meanest, most divisive things they can think of, because that's all they have. That's literally all they have. They have a, yeah, a whole bunch yeah. of divisive social issues to keep morons in line so that they'll keep voting for tax cuts for billionaires. That's mm-hmm. it. There's nothing that's else the plan. there. That's, that's the, the plan. plan. Yeah, so yeah. Um, for the people who said, ignore the crazy man's tweets, because, you know, he's just a crazy man who tweets mm-hmm. things, because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, when he's tweeting about shutting the government down, ha, 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 he can't possibly mean that. Uh, he, he, no, he means it. He means yeah, this shit. And, and, and no one no one on the panel this morning thought that he was incapable of doing that. No, you know, so, if 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 the right tweet came along or the right Fox and Friends show came along to that to convince him to do it, that he wouldn't do it. Yeah. And so when he yeah. said on Twitter, uh across three different tweets, which is a, a you know, a massive, which is essentially war and peace on Twitter for Donald Trump. Um, that we're going to get rid of the transgenders and no more transgenders because it's just incredibly costly and it's awful and they destroy it, blah, blah, blah. Everyone was, I, I said, look, that's an order from the commander in chief. If you're in the military, mm-hmm. you can obey it or you can not obey it, but you can't fucking roll your eyes and say, well, he's nuts. Well, they did. They said, well, you know, it's, it, Twitter isn't acceptable. Uh, verbal orders are acceptable. Written orders are acceptable. Uh, carrier pitch is acceptable, but apparently Twitter, uh, we're not going to count that because he's crazy. And of course, mm-hmm. he won't follow up, but he did follow up on it. Yeah, that, he did. Like, these people are, are not, um, they're not adopting being evil and despicable and divisive and horrible as a pose. They're evil, despicable, horrible people. Donald Trump yeah. is an evil, despicable, horrible shitbag of a human being. And whatever he can figure out to make his base angry enough to ignore the fact that he's fucking them over every single day by rolling back Obama era protections, dozens of them that protect mm-hmm. them. He will right. do. He will fucking mm-hmm. do it at, at a heartbeat. He doesn't have a conscience. He doesn't have yep. a fucking soul. And that's why they love him because he reminds him. They remind him of them. That's yeah. what they are. Meanwhile, in the Meanwhile. department, <laughs> Trump rallies in 36 states have been canceled. Yay! Which is kind of cool. Yeah, uh, the the alt right, service... their alt right is having to go underground anyway because yeah. what was the song that they sang in Boston? Yeah. If you're Nazi and you're fired, it's your fault. <laughs> well, if, yeah. if you're spotted in the mob and you lose your fucking job, if you're a Nazi and you're fired, it's your fault. So, yeah, uh, and that is the case. You know, there are a whole lot of uh, white boys who mm-hmm. thought they could go back to Boston University and uh, talk about marginal tax rates, found out when they got back there mm-hmm. that they were not welcome among their peers. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is amazing to me that, again, this is this is the dragon versus the lamb. It's, no, he's going to open his mouth and say, well, I never voted that this should be an all-white country, and I think I should have a vote in that. Uh-huh. Oh. Really? <laughs> really? Well, that's, ex- that's very exciting that you think that. It's very exciting that that's your, your strong opinion about race in America. And, and uh and, well, and, and the notion You have free speech to say that. Sure. And we have free speech to say, we don't want you around us anymore. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that apparently, that half of the free speech discussion is apparently lost on these people. No, you it have is. the right to say any dumb shit you want. We have the right to get right up in your face and call you a Nazi asshole. Right. That's free right. speech. And we have the right to um, contact the people who are funding and underwriting, maybe not knowing uh, your uh, your little endeavor here and let them know we're not going to buy anything you have to sell. We're not going to we're not going to frequent your service. We're not coming in your store as long as you underwrite Nazis. We're right. free to do that. That's yep. freedom, baby. That is freedom. That is so freedom. Revel in. Um, yep. Meanwhile, notional things this week. Uh, for example, Donald Trump has said he's considering ending DACA. Yep. 
And he's also uh, got the, apparently has the paperwork to pardon racist thug Joe Arpaio just sitting on his desk, just waiting for the right moment. What's the optimal moment to really piss off liberals? Because that's all they do now. They're when, just, when, they're just trolls. When the hurricane hits land. Yeah, yeah. And I'm waiting for after the hurricane. And by the way, God bless everyone in the path of the hurricane. Good Lord. I I am really concerned about you. Get out. Get Get evacuated if they've called you to do that. Um, we are really with you in spirit. Um, I'm waiting for Donald Trump to call it Obama's Katrina. Yeah. <laughs> I really am. It's it like, how, how can we blame Obama for this when I have not uh, confirmed, Republicans Staff have not anything. confirmed a FEMA head yet, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, Donald Trump is planning on cutting funding for the National Weather Service. Yeah, this was very exciting. Very exciting. And uh, the Secret Service has completely run out of money to protect the president. Um, well, and, now, and, to be fair, blue, blue gal, yeah. to be fair, they have to, they have to protect two different Trumps. <laughs> they have, to, protect, they, have, they right. have to have one Secret Service detail for teleprompter Trump, which is where yeah. he very painfully and obviously grudgingly le reads prepared remarks that a bunch of generals have written for him and told him, mm -hmm. read this or we're leaving. And then mm -hmm. you have... Real Donald Trump, who goes to Phoenix and just lets it all out, man. The media are un-American monsters who hate this country. They're the enemies of the people, and maybe we should do something about them. Maybe something should be done about them. Who knows? Um, that's the guy these people voted for. That's the guy. Well, and this is the media. This is what people aren't saying. This is the media normalizing Trump. Yep. When they say there's two Trumps, when uh -huh. they say it's Jekyll and Hyde Trump, yeah. What they're saying is we can control him. The same people can control him. So let's just hold out for our tax cuts because right. we know there is a Jekyll Trump there who can be managed, and we'll just do that. So it, there aren't two Trumps. There's one Trump, and he's an evil person, mm -hmm. and he's also a sick person. And I I do not appreciate uh, the fact that he has had zero competent medical professionals examine him. Mm -hmm. Since he's been a candidate mm -hmm. to now, and no mental health professional has examined him, apparently. Well, the, all, they and, the hand. all they need is the hand to sign the bill, to sign the yep, tax bill. That they don't need him to be sane or rational or anything. No. They just need a pen and a hand. Yep. And you, you know how we know what was what's in the budget? We read it. Yeah. <laughs> Blue gal. This was this was my thing. Thank you for remembering that. When the movie Patton, when Patton, uh, said, who is the other German general? Rommel. 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 Right. He defeats Rommel. He's in, in battle India. with Rommel. He defeats right. Ro Rommel, and he's looking in through his binoculars, and he says, "You magnificent bastard! I read your book. I read right? your book. And you I know, read your book. Now, and he read Rommel's book on how to win a battle. Yeah. And so he knew exactly what Tanks Rommel was going to do. <laughs> Here's what he's going to do. And 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 Blue Gal uh, has uh, wants to spend the entire podcast with me quoting Patton and the Godfather. Yeah, Patton and the Godfather. I, I reluctantly <laughs> next week I will do just that. I'll just quote the Godfather. Father and Patton. But this yeah. week, you really do have to... You know, here's things you we're not going to talk yeah. about this week, but we're going to cover next week. Well, uh, I just wanted to say to Paul Ryan, I've read your budget. So don't we've read your budget. This is, these tax cuts are only about putting money back in the pockets of the American people. No, we've read your budget. You, we know this is a stealth attack on Social Security and Medicare. You can't hide that. We've read your budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, next week, we'll talk about uh, the eclipse that happened this week. Yeah. Um, because it reminded me of Isaac Asimov's Nightfall, which reminds me that we haven't done Science Fiction University in a while. Yeah. And we don't want to normalize Trump to the point where we forget all the other things we do. I know we're really busy, <laughs> all crazy. We want to do a movie review of, uh, uh, of Logan Lucky. We want to talk about the TV series The Defender. Um, both of which are pretty good. I think that's our good. review. Yeah, that's our yeah. review. Boom, done. Mic drop. Yeah. We're, we're out. Um, and point out the fact that everybody's on vacation this week except us. <laughs> Yeah, and and Daily, Daily Show and the President Show are the other two that are That's it. on on Comedy Central took a vacation when tr Trump quote unquote took a vacation, but Colbert and uh, everybody, all the late night shows, uh, Full Frontal, yeah. all those folks, they're all on vacation mm -hmm. until after Labor Day. Yeah. So. But we're on, uh, we're on every week. And you know what we do each week, every week, Gal? Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Gumbo Jack. The great name. I don't know how to describe <laughs> Gumbo Jack. The only way I can put it is if Charles Lawton and Alfred Hitchcock had a baby, then that baby grew up and died at age 87 and came back as a cat, that's Gumbo Jack. Good evening. <laughs> 
I'm Kepra Chuck. <laughs> yeah. I worked Sorry, for got you. Got a little bit of Sydney Green Street in there, too. Yeah, My word is meow, Jowls meow. and uh, belly and jowls and yeah. serious and don't bother me. <laughs> a little bit of Winston Churchill. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't bother. G- Gumbo Jack has heft to his yeah. attitude, all right, and his body, but you will love him. Go to our website, proleftpod.com. Uh, all the information is there. There's an internet kitty there, and it is has all the information to contact us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline is still in full effect. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. We've got a button up there for our Amazon link and our Amazon Canada link at I our swear. website. It's just I, amazing. It's unbelievable. And it has that we, new website smell. You know that new website smell? It's, <laughs> yes, it's alluring. It's a laptop, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now you can smell it on your tablet, too. That's the nice yeah. part. Mm-hmm. Uh, we believe in buying local. We also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. They are having a back to school. I had to tell the girls yesterday. They're having a back to school. Uh, clothing sale now so you know get your jeans and stuff like that uh approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution you can too see our website proleftpod.com for details both our paypal and postal address information is there at Mm proleftpod.com please share our show on facebook or twitter and we've got our facebook and twitter buttons up there at the top of our website as well if you if you haven't followed me or Driftglass on Twitter or followed our podcast Twitter, which announces our shows, mm-hmm. uh, and you can listen to them on Twitter as well, uh, yeah, those buttons are there for you to go up and just click right through and get them. Just go to proleftpod.com and you'll see them there. Come on, people. It's one button. <laughs> it's one website with all the buttons. <laughs> hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? You know, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would strongly support Replacing Confederate monuments with statues of weeping chicken shit Nazis. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.